the collector by wilhelm stiekel from disguises of love translated by rosalie gabler this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org the collector he is to be found in every variety there is not a single article which may not conceivably become an object of his passion for collecting if he is fond of art he collects pictures engravings antiquities china first editions bronzes should he be of a scientific turn of mind he starts herbariums catches butterflies piles up minerals coins bacteria abnormalities or his passion leads him to collect stamps clocks walking sticks umbrellas ink pots buttons hats furniture lamps fire screens sometimes this collecting mania is bound up with erotic interests in this case he will be on the hunt for corsets shoes handkerchiefs aprons petticoats ribbons stockings garters plates of hair curls gloves nail files crutches all these are authentic cases they all have in common the mania for collecting and the emotion entailed by the act of acquisition the compulsion to possess the coveted object is so great that in pathological cases it leads to crime those who have never cultivated collecting do not know the tortures and the ecstasies involved in the acquisition of every new specimen the weighing and considering the anticipation the desire the struggle against the ever-growing passion the final surrender the dread lest the desired object should come into the possession of another the fever of possession the caressing handling examining absorption the ecstasy of the first days of possession the gradual disappointment the eclipse of the old by the new favorite an emotional overestimation of the beloved object is peculiar to all collectors it goes without saying that the picture collector possesses a genuine rembrandt van dyck durer schindler pettenkofen or some other canvas to which he attaches great value some even take great care not to allow a close examination of the picture for fear lest they might be disillusioned illusion is as essential to collecting as it is to love just as a lover overestimates his beloved and can find no faults but only excellencies in her so it is in the case of the collector he has the very finest specimen of its kind nobody else has its equal this pride in the rarity of a thing is typical of all collectors and in this they resemble the man who wants to have the most beautiful wife it will be noticed that i am laying stress on the erotic aspect of the collecting mania but i am not unmindful of its other aspects no doubt the stamp collector travels round the globe by means of his stamps he lives in the history of the stamp he dethrones kings and celebrates memorable historic events through the possession of a particular stamp but when all is said and done it is but a harem that every collector establishes for himself poets have exhaustively described this collecting mania out of the host of examples before me i will choose a very telling one which kierkegaard has left us it is a significant fact that this poet philosopher the fanatical admirer of mozart's don juan himself the philosopher of don juanism and the author of a remarkable and erotic diary should by his own confession prove to be himself a collector he describes the acquisition of an old writing-table some seven years ago i caught sight of a writing-table at a second-hand dealer's which immediately took my fancy it was not in the modern style and rather the worse for wear but it interested me it is impossible to describe the emotion i passed through but i suppose most people have had similar experiences 
my daily routine led me past the writing table at the dealer's and i never failed to look at it lovingly in passing in due course this interest in the writing table became an event in my life it became a necessity of my existence to see it and i would even make a detour on its account the more often i saw it the stronger grew my desire to possess it i knew well enough that this was an extravagant wish as i had no use for it and had to confess that it would be sheer waste of money to purchase it but it is notorious that a craving will find itself some excuse one day i stepped into the dealer's and after asking about various other things i was on the point of going when i casually made a very low offer for the writing table i thought it possible that the dealer might close with the offer and then it would have been through a lucky chance that the desk became mine it was certainly not a question of money that suggested this point of view but the desire to ease my conscience but the attempt failed the dealer was unusually determined for a while i continued to pass by daily and to cast enamoured glances at the writing table i must decide one way or the other i thought to myself for once the writing table is gone it will be too late and even if i were to succeed in tracing it again i should no longer get the same satisfaction out of it my heart thumped as i entered the shop again and bought and paid for the table this shall be the last time i will be guilty of such extravagance i thought it is really lucky that i have bought it for now every time i look at it it will remind me of my extravagance this writing-table shall start a new era in my life depraved desire is so plausible and the way to hell is paved with good resolutions the writing-table was placed in my room and as in the first days of my passion i found my joy in regarding it from the street i now paced up and down before it at home by and by i got to know its interior the countless drawers pigeonholes and shelves and was in every way delighted with my writing-table i have nothing to add to this description there is no need to emphasize or explain anything the various stages of the passion could not be more tellingly portrayed it might well be asked why the poet became enamoured of old furniture we find this zest for old things and persons who have not outgrown their childhood they cling to the past and immerse themselves in the old interests of their life they everlastingly remain children all collectors are children just as all children are collectors the child's delight in collecting is well known who in his youth has not collected stones shells beetles stamps or coins how few have kept up this passion for collecting in later life this delight in a number of objects is soon superseded by the joy of monopoly we want one thing only but it must be priceless and ours for life it is the old struggle between polygamy and monogamy between the idea of a harem and that of eternal fidelity the collector is a don juan in imagination but in reality he may be an ascetic or the most faithful of husbands he compensates himself through his harem he transfers his polygamous inclinations to harmless objects this is especially noticeable in the case of the consciously erotic collector the fetishist he lives a chaste life and can renounce the thought of marriage if only he has his fetish at his disposal he collects women's shoes and experiences all the ecstasies of being in love he is thrilled with passionate feelings as though it were reality and not merely a pastime we see here a clear example of that transfer of emotions of which i propose giving a few more examples in this book the desire in its inception purely erotic transfers itself from the complete object to a symbol all collectors are victims of erotic symbolism they are never satisfied they draw their sustenance from spirits they feed their love hunger with shadowy phantoms 
for this reason the collector never attains peace he never ceases to collect should we sell his collection he immediately starts another or he goes in for exchanging improving altering he only stops collecting when the greatest of all collectors removes him from earthly activities oh if only people knew what an amount of love and pain vainly expend themselves at auctions where these collections are disposed of they would shrink from the acquisition of them but it appears that life would be impossible if we took everything so seriously our joys are wrung from others woes the value of the quarry to a don juan consists in the fact that it is the wife of another that he is pursuing so a collector is happy if he can secure a valuable specimen from another owner if the collector is a don juan in disguise he has a distinct advantage over his notorious exemplar who frittered his life away in the hunt after lust the objects of the collector's desire do not lose their value so easily on the contrary they increase in value with age the stamp which is almost valueless today will be a rarity in a hundred years furniture increases in worth as it grows older but women yet we forget that those whom don juan possessed remained eternally young in his memory he was in fact a collector of memories how much in life is nothing but an idle collection of memories which are dissipated into nothingness end of the collector by wilhelm stickel from disguises of love translated by rosalie gabler the collector he is to be found in every variety there is not a single article which may not conceivably become an object of his passion for collecting if he is fond of art he collects pictures engravings antiquities china first edition the collector by wilhelm stickel from disguises of love translated by rosalie gabler this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org bronzes should he be of a scientific turn of mind he starts herbariums catches butterflies piles up minerals coins bacteria abnormalities or his passion leads him to collect stamps clocks walking sticks umbrellas ink pots buttons garters plates of hair curls gloves nail files crutches all these are authentic cases they all have in common the mania for collecting and the emotion entailed by the act of acquisition the compulsion hats furniture lamps fire screens sometimes this collecting mania is bound up with erotic interests in this case he will be on the hunt for corsets shoes handkerchiefs aprons petticoats ribbons stockings 